Welcome back to Autism Live. Our much awaited guest, uh, Nath Trevett. Am I saying your name correct? Nath Trevett. Trevett. Fabulous. Uh, and Nate is joining us right now. I mentioned uh, before that he is a guitarist, a soloist, a songwriter, a music tor uh, tutor, excuse me, and an Asperger syndrome awareness lifter. I got to know what that is because uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, so uh, he, he has experience in arranging folk songs, mainly Welsh, but also in other languages and is uh, known for one of Wales' favorite uh, folk dances. You're going to have to explain all of this to me. I want to know everything. Um, and you've had many appearances on television over there, and we're excited to have you here with us to talk about not only your work as an artist, but about your uh, desire as a self-advocate to... Uh, help to end suffering and discrimination for those who are on the spectrum. So, Nate, Absolutely. welcome so much for being here. Tell us, uh, first of all, I got to know what an Asperger syndrome awareness lifter is. Well, quite frankly, I don't. I've never even heard of that myself. <laughs> so why did you say that on your bio? It says you're. I have no. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> That's might hilarious. Have been, well, it might. It might have been a. a Typing error or something, anything's maybe, possible. Maybe. So that's another but, thing. Um, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but, but you're a singer uh, and a songwriter. And uh, where can we uh, go to hear your music? SoundCloud. Okay. Uh, you can find it on SoundCloud and you can find it on Spotify. All right. And uh, when, you, uh, when you go there, we just put your name in? Yes. Okay. Naf Trevet. That's okay. right, Nath Trevet, yes. Uh, okay, Nath Trevet. Uh, and Trevet is with two T's at the end. Wonderful. That's right. So, uh, Nate, Nate, Nath, Nath, uh, I'm sorry, I've got it wrong. Uh, That's fine. But uh, talk to us a little bit about your desire. You say that you want to train uh, individuals um, and employers so that we can end suffering and discrimination. Talk to us about what your passion is. Well, I was unemployed for two years and little did I know that the autism directory, which is where I translate part time for now, was my last hope. And along those lines, I was only fortunate to have been, you know, recruited by a company that understand the symptoms, etc but I'm still seeing a lot of suffering happening out there. And, you know, I just want an end to it. I just want people out there who have Asperger's syndrome to feel as though they don't have to feel discriminated yeah. in society. And there is no cure for Asperger's syndrome or autism. Well, the only cure is to stop all the ignorance. Absolutely. And I'm in 100% agreement with you. And, and maybe we can get to something here because I think a lot of people like myself are well-intentioned and I have a son that I love more than anything who is on the autism spectrum. And all I want is for a world in which he can be happy and be treated with respect. And yet there are things that I can't possibly understand. So I'm ignorant. And even though I'm trying, I'm ignorant, and I don't always know what other people need. So for, for people like that that have a great desire to have uh, discrimination and suffering entering, what can we do? Tell me what to do. And tell me what I need to know so that I make sure that I'm not in any way um, making somebody feel bad. Of oh, course. Well, um... First off, I must stress this, I can't speak for other people because everyone is different. Yeah. And some people have, you know, um, mild Asperger's, some people have it more severely. And, you know, it's there's, there's a scale, but it can't be measured with a snap of the fingers or anything like that. You know, you, you need to be able to just um, encourage them to express what it is that they're sensitive to you know how severe their symptoms are and 
but you know you have to have patience with them patience is of essence and i appreciate that you know it isn't a one size fits all and there can't be a one size fits all answer so in terms of for you what what when do you feel discriminated against what are things that uh, people do that make you feel like we don't get it? Well, I'm still seeing a lot of people with AS out there who are being discriminated and excluded in the job market. And, you know, in this day and age, the competition out there has become much more extreme. And, you know, employers just jump to the conclusion that those with AS, simply because they have AS, are incapable of doing the job, well, that's Tommy rot. You know, they just have their own way of expressing themselves. And yes, they have, well, some of them, if not all of them, I would say, have a tendency to go into minor detail. And that is not a bad thing. No. Ha you know, some, do you feel sometimes you need... You? Go ahead. Yeah, sometimes you need people who are really good with minor detail for jobs that include a lot of mathematics, for instance. Or if you were to be a detective working for the police or something, you know, you need to have great skills in focusing on minor detail. And how about an engineer who builds a building that has to be to a certain specification for safety? My goodness, we want people who are really particular and good at fine details. There's a lot of times when it's a plus. Do you feel like that there's a little bit of a shift um, now in the world? There's many employers, not enough, but many employers who have made a pledge to hire individuals on the spectrum and, and that there's even a couple of companies who have quotas that by the end of you know a certain year they have to have hired a certain number of individuals. Does that make you feel like maybe we're at a turning point? Well, the reason I turn to the media in, in, in Wales where I am at the moment was because I wanted to make a difference to people's lives and the thing is people watch too much television or they listen to too much radio and so I thought maybe they would bump into a channel as they were flicking through channels that is in which they would feel encouraged to want to learn something but um, and I think you know the awareness has increased but it's nowhere near the peak as yet and in this day and age that's become much more extreme and laws have become more tight. Plus, there's a great focus on the so-called GDPR. I don't know what that stands for exactly, but it's to do with data protection. You know, the competition out there is much higher, as I said, and people with AS who are really sensitive or can be really sensitive can find things like that stressful and they get anxious, I get anxious, and some of them don't really know how to deal with it, and it causes real worry for them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've been raising awareness in the Welsh media, and I was even interviewed on ITV Wales, in which I gave my answers in Welsh, and they displayed subtitles, because Welsh is my preferred language. But... It's nowhere near the peak, as I said. You know, people still need to be made a lot more aware of it, and they still need to be more understanding and accepting of such individuals. And for that matter, if it was up to me, and I would re be really tempted to make a note of this out there, I would like training on AS in all companies, and I mean in Tesco or in an office of any kind, not a specialist with AS, but everywhere. Yeah. I would like training on AS to be a legal obligation. Well, and I think that that's a reasonable request, I gotta be honest, uh, as pervasive as it is, and as important as it is to our job force, uh, I mean, let's be honest, if we've, we've already, we talk about this a lot on the show, that if we don't utilize the talents of this particular uh, group of people, we're shortchanging ourselves. 
uh, massively. Plus, they, you know, they have a right to work. And, um, and we, as a group of people, should be curious enough to want to know what we can do to make that easier. So I'm 100% I'm with you on this. I think that it should be mandatory. I think that more companies are understanding that. And just like, I don't know how it is there, but here in the United States, there's a lot of trainings right now about being sensitive, about gender um, and pronouns that people want to use. If we can implement that, then we can certainly implement across all HRs in the United States, at least, um, how to have sensitivity for people who are neuro neurodivergent. Um, it's a, a thing that's time has well come. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the awareness still needs to increase a lot more, certainly around Britain, I would say. And, you know, I can't not feel for other people if that makes sense. You know, I'm too sensitive and, you know, I like to be able to stand up for people and help them as best as I can. Yeah. And I read something about Temple Grandin quite recently, and she's an extraordinary figure. And the way she was able to get through the interview in a way that even I wouldn't have thought of, that is just incredible. But all the same, I would like her to know just how I feel about this as well. Well, I'm... Uh... Temple is a friend of mine. I'll, I will make sure to mention it to her the next time I'm speaking with her. Um, I know that she feels very adamantly about making sure that uh, individuals on the spectrum are given job skills and uh, given the opportunity to work. And she feels that if we don't make sure that they have the opportunity to work, that we... Look, the first time I ever talked with her, it was right after Fukushima. And when the nuclear power plant was flooded. And one of the first things that I, I remember her saying was, you know, if that nuclear power plant had been built by someone who had an autistic brain, that would never have happened. She said, I took one look at the plans, plans and she said, I could have told you that thing was gonna flood. Why would you build a nuclear power plant that close to water um, in that circumstance? And she was like, all you have to do is look at the plans and you could, you could see that. And, and she said, if we don't start to recognize the necessity of, of giving these individuals work, it's going to be to the detriment of all of us. And I, I, I completely concur. Um, can I just... Uh, yes. Can I just say that um, talking of the extremes, etc., you know, before all these cuts started to really, you know, get going and get a lot more tense as the years went by. They promised us they'd only last two years, but look at us now, it's been nearly a decade, even longer. But before then, you used to have on-the-job training, but unfortunately in this day and age, in order to win a job, you have to have the experience. Yeah. And, you know, I just don't think that's, that's fair. You know, there's too much focus on power and not in a focus on equality, absolutely. if you know what I mean. Absolutely. But I will tell you a resource uh, for everybody who is out there and saying, I'd like to get more training. Uh, a resource that uh, Temple Grandin shared with me years ago is Khan Academy, that there are, you can take classes in computer science and a wide variety of other things from home for free on Khan Academy and learn like so much about coding um, it's amazing. So well, if I may be completely candid, yes. I still think that on the job training would be better and especially easier for those who find that kind of training at home or whatever stressful because bearing in mind, it's not just down to sensitivities. It can also be quite time consuming as well. Yes, and, and it won't be for everyone, but I just wanted to mention that there is that resource for anybody who's interested. So, um, I, so again, we can go to Spotify and, uh, and listen to you. And what was the, the cloud? What was the other place that I'm not familiar with? I'm SoundCloud. Not, SoundCloud. And, and listen. Yes. So it's N-A-T-H, uh, and then second, last name is T-R-E-V-E-T-T. -T. Uh, we want to encourage people to listen to your music and help support you um, in this endeavor that you have. And I want to thank you so much for being patient with us 
uh, so that we could finally get the interview up and running. Thank you. Patience is a virtue, <laughs> and I just want everyone out there to feel like an equal because there is no such thing as normal. We are all unique. We all do things differently. We don't have to do things the same. And just because there are laws out there, it doesn't necessarily mean that the individual that set them up is in the right, because that individual is just another person like the rest of us. And there we have it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. All right, you take care. Likewise. All right, bye-bye. Farewell. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.